Hi YouTube, this is Miro. Welcome to my 7th part of my series about ASP.NET Core 2. In this part we will learn about routing in MVC. So let's dive in. You can open our Hello World ASP.NET Core 2 project, navigate to the startup class, enter the configure method. Now we can take a look at basic routing in our application. In ASP.NET Core 2 are two different ways how to set up your route. The first one is through this method. I application builder interface has three extension methods for routing. We will take a look on use MVC, which take an delegate. Within this delegate, you have to specify root name and template. Within template, the controller will be the same name of your controller class without the controller prefix. The action is the name of method within your controller and optionally the argument for this method, which is in this case an ID. There are still some special cases. Let's look at this template one more time. Elements within curly brackets are placeholders. Here is sample root definition, URL, and a class. The controller will be replaced with control class, action with method within this class, and ID will be mapped to the ID attribute. With this URL, customer slash get slash 12, you will end in customer controller in get method and the ID will be 12. And equals defines a default value for the parameter. There is a second way how to specify a default value. You can pass one more argument to the map root method and this is an anonymous object. You can create anonymous object with this new keyword curly brackets and then key value pairs. And the root will look like this. Now we have two definitions for the same root. Now we can try out the first URL. If you pass customer to the first template, you will end in customer controller and get all action. If you pass the second URL to the first definition, the controller will be customer because the customer is the default controller and the method will be get all because the default action is get all and you will end with the same result with the second definition because they are equal. A question mark makes a parameter optional. This means that you will be redirected to your controller and method and argument to this method have to be nullable. This can be achieved with question mark after your data type, for example, after this integer. Let's check the difference between these two routes. Both of these will go to the outer controller and get method. The first one will pass number two in there and the second null. So for example, you can make if statement in your get method and if the ID is null, you can return all authors. If not, you can filter by the author ID. The kernel defines the root constraint. Let's take a look on the URL and controller. The second URL will not match the template because you can't cast it to an integer. Constraint can be a data type, method, or even a regex. Let's switch back to the Visual Studio. Now you know how to define a root, but most of the time it will be enough to use the default one. And therefore there is also a short way how to define this. So you can use app.useMVC with default root. And the first definition and the second are the same. Defining roots within your configure method is the first way how can you define your roots. There is also a second way. Let's check this out. You have to use MVC, MVC without parameter. You have to switch to your controller and define the root above your method. So so I will save and run the application. Now navigate to your hello home and index. And there is our index page. And this will be everything for this part. In the next video, we will create a new controller 
So don't miss the next part. Thank you for watching, subscribe and see you in the next part.